Gina is going to get after you here. Okay, good evening, everyone. Wow, that really made me feel loved. Okay. A little bit better. Okay, so a lot of you, thank you very much, had taken, um, what were they, little Easter bunnies, um, anyway, some different tokens, and had committed to bringing bikes or gift cards or something of that sort. We need those by... It's the 20th, right? I need them by the 20th. No. The week before that, so... I don't know the date. The 14th. I need it by the 14th. Next Saturday. Okay, that's what I thought, but I'll tell you, my mind and dates. No. <laughs> I'm moving, man. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my buckets. Okay, sorry. Anyway, so next Saturday, we need to have all of the tokens that you have said that you were willing to purchase by next Saturday. So that's any gift cards, any bikes, any bags of toys, candy that was on them, anything. And there are all of these also left. And these are super easy, like two bags of small individually wrapped candy, um, $10 of toys from the Dollar Tree. So these are a few small things. So if you still want to get a few more, you can, and the girls will be in the back. But I need all of the other things that you have committed to getting by next Saturday. Please. Thank you. So give her a little bit, of, give her a little bit of grace. She has just a couple things going on in her life right now. So we love you. We do love you. <laughs> Look at here, they're stealing them already off you. All right. So just got the report today. We get, we gave out we delivered 107,000 pounds of food January, February, March. That is just, it's just fun. It's just fun. That's one of, tell the boys all the time that if I could just, just do the food run in, uh, what other job can you pull up and drive up and everybody's glad to see you when you get there? <laughs> They're excited that you're there. So anyway, it's awesome. We got a bunch of people jumping in and volunteering and helping. It's pretty cool. Did the ads at Star Radio. Star Radio again is our support sponsor for Easter. They do all those ads, everything for free. And so I caught Tommy last year. He, uh, he said, wow, I heard you on the radio. And I was like, oh, what station are you listening to? <laughs> so, but the four stations at Star Radio is going to start playing the ad here pretty quick. And hopefully we'll get a bunch of kids down at the park. And we're going to be needing some help at the park. So there'll be a sign-up sheet next week. If you can come down and help, would be awesome. Fry bread's coming Thursday. Uh, hopefully, I left a message for Pastor Bruce continue to pray for him. Man, I'm telling you, he's just getting hammered all over the place with his daughter and the different things that are going on. So please pray for Pastor Bruce. And then the last thing I got again is my program boys. I say this a million times, I'm going to say it again. If you're going to do anything with these guys, you need to talk to me. Do not give them anything. Do not give them a phone. Do not just do not. And don't invite them anywhere. And uh, if you want to take them somewhere, you come talk to me and away we go. Okay. I say that a lot and I'm just going to keep saying it. They're like my kids. They kind of are our kids. So I guard them very closely. Okay. So away we go. Cowboy, you are on, sir. All right. Please join me in our set free pledge. I can say this fast tonight. We don't have an interpreter, so. <laughs> See if we can get it back in the correct gear. How about that? 
I am part of the fellowship of the unashamed. I have Holy Spirit power. The die has been cast. I've stepped over the line. The decision has been made. I'm a disciple of Jesus. I won't look back or let up, slow down, back away, or be still. My past is redeemed. My present makes sense. My future is secure. I'm finished and done with low living, sidewalking, cheap giving, and dwarf goals. I no longer need preeminence, prosperity, position, promotion, or popularity. I don't have to be right, recognized, praised, regarded, or recorded. I live by faith, walk by patience. My face is set, my gate is fast, my goal is heaven, my road is narrow, my way is rough, my companions are few, my guide is reliable, my mission is clear. I cannot be bought, compromised, deterred, hired away, turned back, deluded, or delayed. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice or hesitate in the presence of the enemy. I will not give up, shut up, let up till I've stayed up, prayed up. I will give till I drop, preach to all I know, and work till he stops me. And when he comes, my banner will be clear. Amen. Uh, if you bow your heads with me, we're going to bring in tonight's offering. What a groovy way to start worship. You can't beat that. So, Father God, Lord, we want to truly thank you. Thank you for all that you have done for us and are still doing. We miss that so much, Lord. And, uh, Father God, I just pray that we are on track, on fire, and looking towards you in all things. That includes our finances, serving, loving others, sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. So, Father God, and that's why we're here. We're here to worship you. We worship you in the love that you have poured out for us. That's what we love to share, and we're going to give back. And that's what we are doing right now as we give. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. All righty, get your hands together. Let's do some country music. No, oh, just kidding. It's an old hymn. I heard an old, old story. I was saved again from glory. I became alive on Calvary to save a rich like me. I heard about his glory.
We love that old story, amen? He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. You know, we're getting ready to celebrate Easter. But this is every day. He sought us. He sought us out. While we were yet sinners, he died for us. He gave his blood. That's the redemption story we talk about. Amen? Here's an old song that we brought out of the archives. I said it's, it's newer than the last one we just sang. Okay. Not by much, but we're starting old and coming to new, amen? Because that's what he does. He makes us new. He takes old and makes us new, amen? It says, I love to sing his praises. Amen? Amen. His, and his love never fails us. He's always there. And hope we get through this one. So, it's like, Lord, help us. But nothing can separate us from his love.
to the words that you're singing or thinking about what you're singing we can sing songs all day long but his love never fails you know there's nothing that can separate us from him he's there all the time amen Ooh. he became sin who knew no sin that we might become his righteousness he humbled himself he carried the cross love so
Father, we thank you that you are Jesus, Messiah, the name above all names, the blessed Redeemer. Lord, you are our strength, you are our shield, you are our high tower. You're the one who rescues us, Father God. You gave your life that we might have new life, Father God. You create in us clean hearts, Lord. You change us from the inside out, Father God. When others look on the outside, Father God, they see the flesh, Father God, our stumbling, Father. But Lord, you look on our hearts, Father God. You know us from the inside out. You created us while we're yet in our mother's womb, Father God, from the foundations of earth. You looked ahead in time and you called us by name and appointed us the road that we would travel, Father God. And that you use the choices that we make, Father God. And you direct our step and order our steps to bring us to where you want us to be. Father, we thank you for that. Have your way in this service tonight. Lord, as pastor brings the word, Father God, let it penetrate our hearts that we not leave the same. But Lord, that you would be glorified and lifted in this place. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 So that last song we just sang, what did it say? Britt, can you leave it up there for one second, kiddo, please? What's it say at the top? Jesus Messiah. Now how many times have I told you there's some crazy people running around out there? So, Louis Farrakhan claims to be Jesus in Savior's Day address. I am the Messiah. Amen. Yeah. The Nation of Islam leader, Louis Farrakhan, says this. God does not love this world. God never sent Jesus to die for this world. Jesus died because he was 2,000 years too soon to bring about the end of the civilization of the Jews. He never was on no cross. There was no Calvary for that Jesus. The real story is what I tried, and this is still him talking. The real story is what I tried to tell you from the beginning. It didn't happen back there. It's happening right while you're alive and looking at it. Farrakhan told the audience, I represent the Messiah. I represent the Jesus, and I am that Jesus. If I am not, take my life. He better look out. <laughs> Because he just prophesied his death sentence. You got to be careful what you're listening to, what you're reading, who you're paying attention to. Because it says in the last time there's going to be a whole bunch of false things running around. There's going to be false teachers, there's going to be false messiahs and prophets. It's funny in one of the comments down below because I got mad first and then I thought how stupid can somebody be to claim to be the messiah? So in one of the comments down below it, it said well we the I'm not going to quote it exactly right but I'm going to get close. The Bible doesn't tell us what Jesus looks like so Farrakhan might be Jesus. Dear God, help me. So I'm telling you, I tell you every week, read it for yourself. Get in here. Study it. Know what's going on. Pay attention to what's going on in the world. Pay attention to what's going on over in Israel. Because there's a lot of people running around saying that Israel doesn't exist anymore, that the church is now Israel. That's another false teaching going on. Anyway, I can get hung up on that for a long time. We don't want to do that. So I'm going to try and close out our statement of faith tonight. I got a couple sections left here. But we're going to be talking a little bit. We've gone through the water baptism already, but I'm going to hit it one more time. If you'll turn to Matthew 28, first book in the New Testament. Matthew 28. Matthew 28. 
You've all heard this, I don't know how many times, but we're going to do it one more time. Matthew 28, 19 says this, go, th go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Help the people to learn of me, this is Jesus, believe in me and obey my words, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Okay, turn to Acts chapter 2. Let's turn to your right a little bit. Acts chapter 2. Starting in verse 38, it says this. And Peter said to them, Repent, change your old way of thinking, turn from your sinful ways, accept and follow Jesus as the Messiah, and be baptized, each of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, because of the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise of the Holy Spirit is for you and for your children and for all who are far away, including the Gentiles, as many as the Lord our God calls to himself. So we need to do what? We need to repent and be baptized. Now, if you haven't ever accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, that'd be a good time to do that tonight sometime. And then after that, if you haven't been water baptized, I'd encourage you to be, come and talk to me. We'll get you hooked up so that you can be water baptized as a symbol, symbolization of hanging out with Jesus, of walking in as the new, the old man, being buried in, with Christ in his death, and being raised in the resurrection. Right on? You're all excited tonight. <laughs> You're really going to get excited about this part. So another part of our statement of faith is tithes and offerings. Here he goes. He's going to talk about money. That's all JT wants is our money. I'm not going to even go there. Never mind. Second Corinthians chapter 9. Starting in verse 6 says this. Second Corinthians 9. Starting in verse 6. Now remember this. He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows generously, that blessings may come to others, will also reap generously and be blessed. Let each one give thoughtfully with purpose, just as he has decided in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver and delights in the one whose heart is in his gift. And God is able to make all grace... Every favor and earthly blessing come in abundance to you so that you may always, under all circumstances, regardless of the need, have complete sufficiency in everything, being completely self-sufficient in him and have an abundance for every good work and act of charity. So in this, I love this one statement down here, giving should be done generously, even extravagantly, 2 Corinthians 9, 6. Giving should be done cheerfully, 2 Corinthians 9, 7. Giving should be done regularly, 1 Corinthians 16, 2. Giving should be done systematic, 1 Corinthians 16, 2. Giving should be a proportionate, 2 Corinthians 8, 3. God is not primarily concerned about the amount of the gift, but with the motive that lies behind it. God's always looking at our at our heart. So if we're, oh man, I don't know if I should give this or not. Don't. Hello? Don't give it. Because he wants a cheerful giver. And I've told you this, I told you this a little while back ago. And people say, I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. We don't need your money. It's quiet in this Pentecostal church when I say that. But we don't need your money. This place is debt free. Everything that we've got going on, we owe nothing to nobody. Except, you know, we got our monthly bills and all that stuff that we pay, but that gets paid. We owe nobody nothing. So we don't need your money. So guess what? You can go home and tell everybody, JT doesn't want my money. <laughs> You should give with a 
cheerful, grateful, loving heart that you're giving into the ministry that we can in turn, how many pounds of food did I tell you we just delivered? 107,000 pounds of food. We can't do that without, takes fuel, takes maintenance, all that stuff. And that's just for the truck. So there's all, again, never mind, I get off this money thing. Because <laughs> everybody gets mad at me all the time every time I talk about money. But you guys need to read all of chapter 9. Chapter 9 will hook you up. And then the verse that makes everybody mad, back up to Malachi. It's the last book of the Old Testament. And I'm trying to read through these fast because I got a lot of scriptures tonight. Malachi chapter 3. Last book in the Old Testament. Malachi 3 says in, chap in verse 8, Will a man rob God? Yet you are robbing me. But you say, In what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offering you have withheld. You are cursed with a curse. For you are robbing me in this whole nation. Bring all the tithes, the tenth, into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. And test me. This is the only place God tells you to test him. Test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you so great a blessing until there is no more room to receive it. Then I will rebuke the devourer, incense, plagues, broke dryers, messed up cars. Doesn't say that in there, but that's what's going on. For your sake, and he will not destroy the fruits of the ground, nor will your vine in the field drop its grapes before harvest, says the Lord of hosts. Have you ever not had the money and something breaks? Boy, I'm getting myself in huge trouble here. If you test God in this, I believe because that's happened to us. I've heard other people say it. If you're faithful in your giving, he will always take care of you no matter if it's a broke car, broke thing, broke dryer. Our dryer one day just quit. A week before Christmas, a week before Christmas when all the kids are coming to the house. <laughs> so I just prayed. Father God, help us. Played with it. Didn't work. Called Eklund's, I think. Eklund said, do this, do that. Did that, do this, didn't work. And we called somebody else too. Called a repairman, do this, do that. Okay, didn't work. Didn't work for two days. We just kept praying, 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 praying. And then all of a sudden, one morning, afternoon, evening, I don't know, what, all I hear is, yes! <laughs> the dryer came on. We didn't do nothing else. Just prayed. And all of a sudden, and yes, that's been five months now. Hadn't quit since. Still running. I don't know how God does that. But I know he does do things like that. He'll show you what's going to happen too. All right, I got to get off that. All right, we're never going to make it through it. So we also believe in divine healing through the redemptive work of Jesus Christ on the cross. So Matthew chapter 8, just turn to your right just a little bit. Matthew chapter 8. Starting in verse 16, you need to read all of this where Peter's mother-in-law and many others are healed, but I'm just going to read a couple of verses here. It says, when evening came, they brought to him, to Jesus, many who were under the power of demons, and he cast out the evil spirits with a word, with a, with a, and restored to health all who were sick, exhibiting his authority as Messiah. I love how the Amplify keeps putting Messiah in there. 
poor Mr. Farrakhan, he's just going to have troubles there. But <laughs> So that he fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah out of Isaiah 53, 4. He himself took our infirmities upon himself and carried away our diseases. We're also going to talk about that when we come to communion tonight, before we get with communion. Look at James chapter 5. Turn to your right. Right after Hebrews. James chapter 5 starting in verse 13 says this. Is anyone among you suffering? He must pray. Is anyone joyful? He is to sing praises to God. Is anyone among you sick? He must call for the elders, spiritual leaders of the church, and they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will restore the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Now, I always take this verse 2 and say, how many times have I told you that you're all what? You're all ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So if somebody's sick and you know them personally, you don't need to call me. Hello? If you're a born again, saved believer in Jesus Christ, you have the power of Jesus residing in Say it, me. You have the power of Jesus Christ residing in yourself. So if you know somebody that's sick and they're asking to pray, don't call up, hey JT, I need you to go to the hospital and visit so-and-so. Well, who is so-and-so? Well, it's a friend of a friend down the friend's side. You walk in there and believe in faith. Don't go in there saying, well, I don't know, this sucker's looking pretty bad. I don't know. And I don't know how many times it's happened that we've gone in to pray for somebody. And I've done it myself. I have to slap my own self sometimes. I walk in and they are looking bad. I ain't joking. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm going to pray over them. And then walk out and then here comes somebody and they say, well, how are they doing? Oh man, that sucker, I don't think they're going to make it. What kind of prayer of faith is that? It's better not even go in there and pray for them. You know what I'm saying? We got to have faith enough to believe that God will raise them up. And the cool thing is, if they do die, God just totally healed them. If they're a born again believer, guess what? Now they're, if they die, they're immediately in the presence of Jesus Christ. What better healing is, I'd rather go that direction myself, tell you honest God truth. We had a little, what was Bob and, what was my little girl's name? Did the food all the time. Bob and, uh, Anyway, don't make any difference. She was really sick and went over to the house to pray for her. And as I was leaving, she said, JT, if I die, don't you dare come over here and pray for me to be raised from the dead. <laughs> she says, I'm going to be with Jesus and don't even think about coming over here and praying to raise me up. She knew where she was going. And she was a little bit excited to get there because I think it was like a week later that she passed away and I know she's sliding down them streets of gold in her socks up there just having a blast. All right, last verse on this. Isaiah 53. Old Testament, kind of in the middle there. Isaiah 53, starting in verse 3, says this. Talking about Jesus, he was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and pain and acquainted with grief. And like one from whom men hid their faces, he was despised and we did not appreciate his worth or esteem him. But in fact, he has borne our griefs and he has carried our sorrows and pain. Yet we ignorantly assumed that he was stricken, stuck, struck down by God and degraded and humiliated by him. But, here's one of those great buts in the Bible. 
But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our wickedness, our sin, our injustice, our wrongdoing. The punishment required for our well-being fell on him. And by his stripes, by his wounds, we are healed. So we're going to get ready to take communion here in a little bit. Keep your finger here and turn over to 1 Corinthians 11. Back into the New Testament here. First Corinthians 11, starting in verse 23, and I'm going to read a good chunk right here, so just hang on with me. It says, For I received from the Lord himself that instruction which I passed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is, represents my body, which is offered as a sacrifice for you. Do this in an affectionate remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant, ratified and established in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, in affectionate remembrance of me. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are symbolically proclaiming the fact of the Lord's death until he comes again. So then whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in a way that is unworthy of him will be guilty of profaning and sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. But a person must prayerfully examine himself and his relationship to Christ, and only when he has done so should he eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without solemn reverence and heartfelt gratitude for the sacrifice of Christ eats and drinks a judgment on himself if he does not recognize the body of Christ. That careless and unworthy participation is the reason why many among you are weak and sick and a number sleep in death. But if we evaluated and judged ourselves honestly, recognizing our shortcomings and correcting our behavior, we would not be judged. But when we fall short and are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined by undergoing his correction so that we will not be condemned to eternal punishment along with the world. So then, my brothers and sisters, when you come together to eat the Lord's Supper, wait for one another and see to it that no one is left out. And then, it, well, I might as well read the last verse. If anyone is too hungry to wait, let him eat at home so that you will not come together for judgment on yourselves about the remaining matters of which I inf was informed. I will take care of them when I come. I always tell you before we do take communion always, you need to look at, look at your heart. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you, because how many of you know there ain't nobody perfect in this room? Nobody. There ain't nobody perfect walking around the world right now, especially not the one that says he's Messiah. I still, it just, that just rattles my brain. So we, before we take communion, we need to examine ourselves because we're doing, we're symbolically doing what? Taking his body and his blood. Now I want you to flip over and whoever's going to do communion, come on up here. I want to read you a couple notes and then I'm going to have you flip to the last verse. It says, the Lord's Supper was a centerpiece of early Christian worship. They gathered around one table. Fellow believers met with the Lord and with each other in unity. Christ had expressed this type of humility and unity when he instituted the supper. The Lord's Supper looks back to Christ's death and forward to his second coming. So if you'll turn over to Matthew 26. And we'll close with this scripture. Matthew 26, starting in verse 26. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And when he had taken a cup, 
and given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink from it all of you. For this is my blood and the new and better covenant which ratifies the agreement and is being poured out for many as a substitutionary atonement for the forgiveness of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom when he's coming back. So listen to this. The Lord Jesus at his last meal with his disciples before he went to the cross instituted this ordinance for his church throughout this age. It's called the Lord's Supper. Using common everyday items, the bread and the wine that could be found on any table, no matter how poor, he gave us a remembrance so that we would never forget that his broken body and his shed blood brought salvation to us. So if you go back to Isaiah 53, what's it talking about? Our healing by his shed blood. Our, we can be healed by his wounds that were put on his back. And so I want, for just a few seconds here, I want you just to bow your heads. And seriously ask the Lord, if you're not a born again believer tonight, I recommend that you don't take communion. And if that's you tonight and you say, but man, God's tugging on, something's going on in my life right now. My belly's flipping and flopping. Well, I can tell you that's the Holy Spirit trying to draw you, woo you to Jesus Christ. And if that is you tonight, and you say, you know what, I, I want to take, I want Jesus as my Lord, I want Jesus as my Savior. We'll pray with you tonight. And if that's you, just raise your hand real quick. Right on. Right on. I see both your hands there. So for you two, let's just all pray together with this. So just say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me. Of all my sin. I know I'm a sinner. And I need a Savior. So Lord, tonight I surrender to you. I turn my life over to you. And I want to serve you the best I know how. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yay for you too. Now again, just bow your heads. Let's take a minute just to think. Go ahead, Norm. Just to ask the Holy Spirit, what's going on in my life? What do I need to fix? What do I need to correct? We all have something that we need to fix. Father, tonight as we get ready to receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ, I just thank you that you are a forgiving God. Thank you that you are a redeeming God. And that you do love us so much that you sent your son Jesus for us. Father, help us to better understand what Jesus went through for each and every one of us. And as we come and take communion tonight, never to forget what he did for us and never forget that he is alive today and working in amongst each and every one of us. So we thank you tonight for all that you've done for us. In Jesus' name. Amen.
And as you're ready, come on up and receive it. You can take it with you. You can take it up here however you want to do it. Just pray you just bless each and every one of us as we go out tonight. Lord, help us to be the light that shines, that people see Jesus in us, Lord, and ask questions and the kingdom of God will be expanded this week by new people coming in, Lord. I thank you for the two that gave their hearts to you tonight. Father, encourage them, strengthen them. Holy Spirit, I pray you just lead them and guide them in the ways of truth. And we just thank you for all that you're doing for us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you. Love you.